Hi guys, I'm back. Okay. Um, I have the paints that I used yesterday all in a row. A little bit of sienna here. Uh, these are the colors that I just poured with, with the little air bubbles in it. I still see air bubbles. So we'll just let that sit. Might do one tomorrow. Um, but right now I'm going to use uh, the ones that I mixed yesterday. And these are the ones that have silicone in it. It's the same mix. It's uh, Windsor & Newton. It has a 30 to 40 percent pouring medium, 10 percent uh, gloss medium. It has a 10 percent PVA mix and it has a little bit of flow troll just to make it, you know, more flowy. And uh, that's it. And of course, dimethicone. So we're going to pour this in. We're going to put the gold in and we're going to put the other color of turquoise in more of this and I just might have enough to do two so I do have two canvases ready and a little bit more of the gold and I'm going to top it off with not gold, but this one, just to make sure that we have something going on there. So as you can see, it's all layered up and I'm going to pour straight out of this little thingy here. Okay, let's go. And we're going to make those nice little feather movements. But this time it's just going to be a little bit different. I'm going to make sure it goes over the side here. There it is. That is a totally different colors. And let it come down here. Now it's totally covered. That is kind of pretty. But, of course, the magic is going to happen when we're going to torch it, because we are going to torch it. Just have to get a new pellet knife. See, there are already bubbles popping up, but these are the good ones. They don't look like air bubbles, but they really look like something that happened when you pour them. Something like real cells. Just one more here. There it goes. Now, what you can do if you have silicone in your paint, the thing that you want to do is determine where you want your cells. Now we could we could do it the whole thing. This is kind of nice that it just has a couple of these cells. That's kind of nice looking. So you could let it uh, absolutely dry like this, but of course you can also um, manipulate it with the torch. Now, let's see if we can do this with a lighter, because a lot of people ask me, can you do this with a lighter? Let's see. No, you burn your finger with a lighter. <laughs> that what happened there, that is only um, because of the, uh, the air bubbles that are in there. Let's see. Well, there are, see those little cells popping up? You can do it with a lighter. Maybe if you have one of those bigger lighters that you don't have, you have, have your finger next to the flame. See, it's selling up nicely. But we're going to give it a little. And we're going to wait and then do some more. As you can see, it's starting to work. Let me get you in a little closer. Let's see. Yeah. There we go. And I want some down here. And maybe up there. See how fast that that sells up? A little bit up here. And a little bit down there. And no more than that. Let's just leave it as is. 
because it will be spreading out just a little bit more. They will grow just a little bit, but not that much. So we're going to leave it as is. Then we still have our formation, the pattern that we poured, and we have uh, a couple of cells. And when I look at it on monitor, it's looking cool. Let's see if we can get you guys back out. Oh boy. Nope. Sorry about that, but I have to get up and see if I can get you guys back down. There you go. So this is it. I'm not going to do anything more to it. I think it's kind of interesting. I'm going to just pick it up and put it away. That's uh, sort of the downside of a big studio when you have to put something away, you have to walk a lot. So um, right now I'm going to pick out a little bit of photo paper. I'm going to try and scoop this all up. There it goes. And we're going to cover the paper with this. There's a little hole in my plastic and it catches on my pellet knife. That's too bad. That's not too bad, but let's see what we can do because we have a lot of paint left. Let's do wiggly things. I really enjoy doing that. I think I'd make a really good cake decorator too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really would. I'd, 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 I'd like that. But you know, the thing is, uh, with cooking, I'm a pretty good cook, but I can only cook when I'm hungry. <laughs> so I could never really do a restaurant or anything like that because people would have to wait till I'm hungry before I can cook. <laughs> That's the truth. Okay, I kind of like that. That's okay, but I'm not totally uh, thinking this is really what I like. So let's just clean this off a little bit, put it down. Okay, let's come in with more sienna. And we're going to swipe it. And I want the gold. I want a lot of gold popping up. That's nice. And I want the turquoise because it looks so nice between those two colors. Okay, let's swipe it. Nah, I don't want to squish it. I want to swipe it. That is pretty. This is absolutely something I'd want to frame. I want to show you up close. Let's see. Can you see that gold? Uh, you're not really seeing it as I'm seeing it, but all this is all uh, gold. That's going to be beautiful. I might put it in a brown uh, mat because that's going to really pick up See that? Dark brown matte would look beautiful on this, but this is all gold. Everything you see up here, that's going to be really beautiful once it's dry. So this one we're going to 
leave right there. And let's do another. Just one more. But we're going to do a little bit different. See how already these colors have sort of mixed into each other? Eh, that's really too bad. But we'll see what happens. I'm going to really spread them out. And if we don't like it, we can swipe it. Oh, I do like this. This is beautiful. Look at that. I just wish you'd see the same colors I'm seeing because you're seeing it more the, on the greenish side when I'm s really seeing it more on the bluish side. So that's going to be awesome when, when you frame it. Look at that. Wow. That is beautiful. Only I'm, I do miss a little bit of cells and I'm not sure I'm going to get some. Oh, yes, I am. That's kind of pretty. Oh, it getting close. There it is. That's going to be really pretty. Too bad it doesn't have a little bit more contrast colors. A little bit more contrast would have made it just that little bit more special, but sometimes it's just not in the stars, right? Still pretty. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop now because I have to make some room and I'll be right back. I'll stick this behind. Okay, we got just, uh, just had to clean this up a little bit because uh, I sort of like that, what I just did. So, but I missed a little bit of contrast in it. So I'm going to pour in a little bit more of the uh, sienna because I like the way that pops up. And I'm going to do both siennas, one with silicone and the other one without. And we'll just see what happens when we pour this. Is, and I'll show you up close when we move it. And I'm trying to manipulate it into something that I really like. Oops, don't want to pour it that way because then the feathers sort of, the feathery look sort of gets out of control, but that is kind of pretty. Let's see if we can get some little cells up there, just a little bit. We don't want the whole thing uh, gone because we uh, did the cells in it. I'm going to do a little bit of gravity. That is nice. Okay. Let's see how we would frame this. I, w I think I'd need something like that. Or maybe this. This is kind of cute. Oh, you can't see it. I pushed my, uh, my installation a little back because uh, I did catch that my head was uh, in the way. So uh, right now, I, I'd have to really lean forward to get in the picture, so th that'll work. Now I like this, yes. I, I think I'd like a little bit more of cells up here. Let them grow a little bit, like this is growing. I like that. Yeah, that pulls it together. Sometimes you just want to, you know, you want to just stand there, look at it and soak it up. You don't want to um, see even this wh while I'm doing this. You can see that? That is pretty. But if I pull it over a little bit, it balances it out. And that's something that, you know, you can, you can do while just watching those cells grow a little bit more. And then all of a sudden it turns into something that it's worth framing. Because not all my, uh, all my photo paper stuff is worth framing, I don't think so. 
I have a lot that I find really not that interesting, but this one is. Look at that. See that? That is really pretty. And guys, I really, you know, I don't want to push you. I don't want to tell you guys what you have to do. But the thing is that by pouring on this photo paper, even if you were to mix up all these colors, put them down there, and you were to pour photo paper like 20, 40, 60 of them, you know, it teaches you what to look for in the paint. It helps you uh, determine the colors that look good. Um, like this one, I, I really, I'm starting to really like this one. You know, you can play around with the torch, do some torching, some you leave just as you poured it. But what I want to say is you don't always have to pour on those canvases because I know it can get very expensive when you do. And for framing them, if you just have like, I don't know, if I were to go to an art fair, I'd have, I think, 40 to 50 of these um, framed in mats, not in, in the frame. Um, I would buy some frames because I think if you look around, you can get them really cheap, uh, the 8x8 eight eight frames. And uh, you, you, sh you should have a few just to show how beautiful it is when it's totally framed. And I'm sure that would be something that people will buy because a lot of people don't want to buy uh, expensive art. They, they just want something to pop on the wall, something that they enjoy looking at. We're going to see what happens with this one. I'm going to pour it all around. Whoops. <laughs> Looks like a real big sort of a worm. But you can get the idea. Look at that. Is that not just pretty? Even without cells, it's pretty. And with paper, you can manipulate it. See how I closed that gap? And that's something that is uh, not possible on a canvas. So when you're doing this kind of stuff, um, just pouring for the uh, frames, I prefer this above uh, small canvases. Very cheap, and if it turns into something you don't like, you can always just, you know, ditch it. Let me see if you're still in focus here. Yes, you are. Now, I would like just a tiny little bit of gold going over here. Like that. And then I want a clean pellet knife. The point has to be really clean because I want to swipe it just a little bit. Let's see what happens. There it goes. Ooh. I'm a little bit jittery. And then I'm going to let it come together, come down. There it is. That's nice. And I'm only going to do uh, torching around that gold bit just to see if that looks cool in a frame. Just this bit. I think it would look cooler if I took it down a bit like that. And that's why I always say keep one of those little um, little frames for just, you know, they'll get dirty, but you can still use them to determine if it's something you like. Now the, the whole thing about the uh, pouring on this paper is it's cheap. It gives you um, a lot of uh, possibilities to uh, uh, experiment without ruining a canvas that you think, oh, there goes another canvas. And uh, I think that's the uh, key to uh, pouring, that you have a lot of practice. Got to pull that in there. Gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay, let's see. I did turn it around now, but it might just work. Yeah, I find that kind of interesting. Only up here, 
I'll have to do a straw, I think. Making it a little bit bigger. And I still got my little lines in there, so that's cool. Now, let's see. Perfect. We'll keep that one, too. Okie dokie, people. This is it. I'll stick it behind the other one. And I have one canvas left, so one pour left. I'll see you in a bit. Love you all to pieces.